Ladies, out to go. <laughs> Score three eggs. Three. My mom makes some superb eggs with these things. And I and I always top it off with a with some Kataya fire for good measure. Peggy, a Polly, and a Millie. The Millie is the. Look at that! It's, she makes such big eggs. Tell yes, put them it. in the egg tray in the bread bin. Roger, Roger. Thank you, hun. Good work, girls. We've got some guests coming. Ooh. Yay! Oh, business is booming. Well, the egg business is. Don't think we're going to make a fortune out of that, though. <laughs> well, something is better than nothing, even at no, no matter how minuscule the uh, profit is. Yeah, that's true. We have an Airbnb, and it's very romantically called the Pearl of Whakatiwai. <laughs> we call it the detox unit, because that's what he went to, my father used to call it, as a kind of joke. Yeah, hon, what's your job? To make the bed. Yep. That's about it. I'm the cleaner. She's the cleaner, I'm the maker. Yeah. Well, now that Mr. Sunshine's uh, out of, <laughs> off the beach, <laughs> want me to take her for a walk? I walk fast, try to keep up. Come on, Shep. My name is Hunter McGregor, and I function on the high end of the autistic spectrum. So he went off to this paediatrician who shall rena remain nameless. While I wasn't really expecting anything bad, he, he did a little hearing test before that. She sat with him and asked for 15 minutes, and then she said, well, um, your son's autistic. I'm sorry, what's your name again? There was no, like, and now there, there, it was like this bomb I got dropped on me, and then she got up and left the room. It was like, well, how's that for? It wasn't a really good way to deliver something like that. Anyway, that was shattering because I didn't really know what I was going to be dealing with, and I was a single parent basically. Come on. I was diagnosed with autism when I was two years old, and this horrified my family, because rumor has it that autism itself is a mental disability. Autistic spectrum disorder. I can't explain it. People don't know what it is, really. No one, they still don't know what causes it. Um, it's a spectrum, like a rainbow. And, you know, people, there are um, genius people who are autistic. There are not genius people who are, it's like the so-called normal spectrum. It's just a vast variety of differentness. But I guess the most 
obvious thing about it is that he is quite odd and he doesn't have fabulous social skills. But he is actually quite social. This is her playground. She can do whatever she likes out here. Running, running along the rocky beach, chasing seagulls, chasing birds is her favorite thing to do. You know, buzzing them for kicks. He's just funny and interesting and wonderful. But I had to start looking at things from the perspective of how his life was gonna be. And, you know, I knew that he didn't have any friends, you know. He didn't want any friends, basically. I think when you're autistic, you don't know how to develop a social circle where that kind of thing happens. And I can't do that for him. I can't ring people up and say, hey, could you come down and play with Hunter? <laughs> the weird and unfortunate thing is, is that that hasn't stopped because, you know, Hunter is still Hunter and I'm so glad he is. But, you know, we're both getting older and, um, and he's really worried and anxious about what he's going to do. Come on, Shep. We're almost home free. <laughs> Ooh. See what I mean about the windows, though? Dirtier on the inside. But we can't blast them in here. No, but I have to, that's my least favourite job in the world. Oh no, the cleaning the oven's the worst job. Because poor Hunter's eyesight is not good enough for him to see sh dirt around the place, so that's why I'm the cleaner and he's the maker. I mow the lawns whenever Hunter mows the lawns. It's like and a, a series of mohawks, and so I have to go and do it all again anyway. You're good at firing up the lawnmower. That is something I'm not good at. So together, we're like the perfect team. He can start the lawnmower and I can mow the lawns. Right? Yeah, and what... And if... And this week, I was... I was able to pull out some very stubborn weeds. Their roots grew deep. They did, they did. But I showed them who's boss, you even though did. I felt like giving up. Intruder! Intruder! You're not allowed in here. Polly, not in my bedroom. <laughs> Polly, if you crap on the carpet, there'll be trouble. Polly? I'll pick him up, her up. Polly, here, here. Polly, OK. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, Polly. It's OK. He's a good chicken. I'll, I'll seal the door. Yeah, seal the door. You're a good chicken, but you're not allowed in the house. There is a little chore I have for you, which is the um, Phoenix palm fronds have more fallen onto the lawn. Oh, those. Those. No sweat, I'll deal with them. I can't even describe my relationship with Hunter because we're like, we're just a, we're one unit. We're, we're like a, an entity, you know. It's me and Hunter. That's the way, that's the way it is. What I like about this place, um, it, it used to belong to my grandfather. It was a bit run down when we moved. When, he, when we moved him here. We were able to uh, modernize our home after the fire. And now it looks better than ever from the inside. It is, it sure is peaceful, and it's got a neat view of the firth. Would you look at that? Oops, I almost forgot. 
Ever since I've got my degree of creative technologies, we've been down here for, we've lived down here for three years. It is much farther away from society than we bargained for. I, I mostly just hang out with her and, and make sure that I were, that we're taking a step forward in finding myself employment. <sighs> Who wants a flat white, anyone? We made up a breakfast and bed establishment here so we would earn some money from our visitors who would appreciate the view the, the our view of the firth and and all the has and all the hospitality we have to offer. Typical off by a few degrees. Way below par. <laughs> I should have sent you to the army, then you would have been good at making beds. Maybe you should send me to a bed maker shop or something like that. <clears throat> All the same, can be perfect if you catch my drift. Pull it down a bit at that end. Huh? You can be perfect. No, that, uh, that way, that way, that way. Uh -huh. That way, that way. Pull the sheet that way, there you go. That's it. You can't afford to live in Auckland. And here, at least, we can afford to be here. He kind of likes it here, I think. He's... Yeah, I think he does like it here. At first, he really hated being stuck in the boonies. But all I had to do was make sure he had a really powerful internet connection, and he was fine. So we've got this massive, huge, I don't know how many gigabytes pouring into here, which we would have needed to do anyway for the Airbnb guests. So, but, I mean, yeah, as long as he's plugged in, he's fine. Hey, Ma, where are the bottom sheets? Oh, you mean pillowcases? That's right. Hang on. Um... One second. Sorry about that. Thank you, Ma. It slipped my mind. Right, where was I? He's got a great big glorious brain. I know. I wish he would have an opportunity to do something good with it. You know, the last time we did some filming. He had been offered um, to do a degree at Media Design School, which is a really good school. My very first idea for a game, Zodiac Quest, The Will of the Stars. Mm -hmm. You probably noticed that big painting behind, the, uh, behind my computer. That's my original game idea, the very first. Didn't quite make it off the ground. So the story goes something like this. The world of Zodia, everyone's happy. The star glyph provides them, the star glyph, that thing in the middle there, the middle there, it provides the world with the colors power, but then a fucus, a fucus comes along, sh destroys the glyph, scatters the star stones, Zodia falls into disarray. That alone is what convinced me to um, take up MDS and receive my degree of creative technologies, which is right there on the wall. First things first, I have to um, find it. Well, if I'm gonna make this, make this a reality, I, I would have to find myself a job out there in the field first. You know, join the battle, if you uh, pardon the metaphor. Yeah, I do want to get myself out there, but what if I bungle and, and get booted from the battlefield? That would, that would be a serious disgrace, but what am I worried about? Now that you're going through this whole 
trying to find it, get it, get some employment thing. I have to help you through the rejection phase. Yeah, can you can't avoid the bitter sting of rejection now, can you? But hey, if you found a job in the media industry, I don't see why I can't. Right, but I'm not like a high functioning autistic person. Mm. And I have good eyesight. So you've got a couple of biggies, big hurdles that are not necessarily helping your case, which I think is unfair, but it's... True. True. Anyway, it's not the... It's not the end of the world if you never get a job. Because you can still do what you love doing, and as long as you're enjoying life, that's the main thing. Yeah. I had no idea she is going through the same stress that I am trying to find employment. Are you sure you have cold feet? It's not that I have cold feet. I just, it's just everything that you go through, I'm feeling. It's like I'm your invisible... My other brain. Not your other brain, but it's like I'm your invisible other, other you, sort of. Well, I'm not exactly invisible, but you know what I mean. Hmm. I'm there for you, kiddo. That's what I mean. You're not doing this on your own. I'm never alone, am I? No. You're not. And if all else fails, you can have Shep. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, the ideal environment for Hunter would be to be with a group of people who are conceptualising characters and, and games. But whether or not he can get crack into that kind of realm, I don't know. It's a big ask. He doesn't have really great coding skills or, you know, he's not fast with as animation. He's... But he understands the entire process now, which is good. <laughs> so much blood! <laughs> always with Hunter and anyone on the autistic spectrum, anxiety is always going to be a big issue. And Hunter has had, you know, he's actually been able to battle his anxiety. And the whole thing about going to media design school was huge for him in terms of giving him confidence. The fact that he did that, that he would get himself there and get himself back and do it and be there and get his degree. Massive achievement for him. He can be anxious about the most ridiculous things. Like, oh my God, I've heard the yen is falling. Is this going to be the end of Nintendo? And it'll, it'll freak him out for a day or something. You know, it's that, that kind of thing. And it's not something I can really talk him through and say, Listen, don't worry about it. It'll, you know, he, he will worry about it. He worries about crazy stuff. He worries about storms, like that big storm we had, that was freaky. He's been worried about having another one of those. He worries, he just worries. Kind of cute, really. He was really cute. He was. He could be quite distant, though. But um, he was pla He was just a placid, a lot of placid baby, a lot of and young one. A lot of autistic kids are quiet. They run around. They, you know, a lot of them are hyperactive and run, and some of them are runners, and that's so it's really scary for people because they could just go and disappear. But um, Hunter never did anything like that, apart from on the beach when... But he knew I was behind him, probably. And he's the best travelling companion. We've travelled a bit, because one of the things when we got our second opinion about Hunter's original diagnosis, Professor Weary said the best bit of advice I ever got, which was, don't let him get stuck in routine. 
And fortunately at that time I was working in a job where I could afford to travel. So Hunter and I traveled everywhere. We went all over the place, India three times. And so that was great because he's really not, and never has been stuck on routine. He's never really seen himself as being different. He's never, I don't think, worried about it. The thing that, that makes him feel most different is the fact that he's got terrible eyesight because of the acute hydrocephalus he had as a, like, thank you not double whammy when he was 13. Damaged optic nerve and, and so, you know, he's pretty partially blind, so. That's the thing that makes him feel more different to people. It's as, he would have loved to have been able to drive, but he can't see for shit. I mean, he can't see very well. <laughs> when it comes to things like looking for a job, he's never, ever looked on seek or anything like that. He needs constant motivation. But once he's there in front of something and doing it, he's great. He's just like, he needs guidance. Like a missile. Um, hello? Hello? Hey, Hunter. H how's it going? Good, mate. Um, and, and how are you, and how's all the, um, and, and all the, how's all the arts and crafts coming along? Pretty good, Hunter. Pretty good, mate. Have you come down to do a little bit with me today? Well, it's just that my mum has this idea of, of using this place as a studio for, for guests who want to be, who want to hone their artistic skills. Cool. Write me a word on there without an eye in it, or a little sentence, not using an eye. I'll see what we can do. My name's Tony Johnson, and I live in Kiowa. I used to live at the lodge with Hunter some time ago, but I'm living down the road and using this place as my current studio. Roy suggested that we have a Airbnb experience based out of, out of the studio. In, um, in the future, and maybe in a two or three months' time, and um, I think there's a place there for Hunter to 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 work with me and and with with anybody that would be like to get involved in in the project. Yeah, sure. What does that read? That reads Hunter. Now you've got an option here, Hunter. Do you want to leave it plain like that, or do you want to put some decoration on it? I'll I'll just leave it plain like this. Cool. Okay. I don't know my own strength. I had no idea I had that much artistic potential in me. I mean, look at, I mean, look at my door sign. <laughs> it's pretty good, Hunter. You've done a really good job, man. You, you really think so? I do. I'm, yeah, I do. I think you've done a really good job. You've got really good spacing, and you've got them nice and even, which is very hard to do freehand with stamps. Very hard. And you've done real good, man. Real good. Yikes! That's yeah. high praise. Yeah. How did it go with Tony? Oh, it was great. It, it was pretty, f it was fun, all right. Fun? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's extreme. Well, we... What, what'd you decide? Well, uh, I, well, well, for once, I made, um, I made some, I made some cups and, and a sign for my den. Good grief, all that in that short time. Yes. I don't think I help Hunter, actually, a lot on that, because I mean, you know, I am as isolated here as he is, and I've become a little hermity, so I think I'm a bad influence on him. I think that he probably needs to be dragged out of his shell a bit more. I mean, it's not going to happen down here. But if he moved, you know, if he had a job, then that would probably happen naturally. Oh, look, those toadstools. I worry for him in that, and that's the reason why I want him to be doing something that he loves doing and to be more independent, even though it would, will break my heart because I love having him around, but I have to let him go if he gets an opportunity to go. Hopes for Hunter would be that he just like, there's obviously the one thing that everybody hopes for their children is that he's happy. I would like him to fall in love 
with another gorgeous, slightly geeky woman or guy or whatever, and be living in an environment where he can be happy and cook with somebody else. <laughs> and ultimately be feel secure. <laughs>